Hello guys, welcome to the session Object Oriented Programming Principles Part 3. In this session, we are going to learn polymorphism and inheritance. In the previous sessions, we have learned we have learned abstraction, encapsulation, and also classes and objects. So what what this polymorphism and inheritance does? So the objective of learning this polymorphism and inheritance is to understand how it will address the issues of extensibility and simplicity. So for simplicity, we already looked at uh, abstraction and encapsulation in the previous sessions. Guys, if you haven't uh, 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 watched my previous uh, sessions, please watch them so that you will understand abstraction, encapsulation, classes and objects and also functional programming issues. In this session, I'm going to teach you guys about polymorphism and extensibility. Let's look at what is polymorphism. So, if you see here, by definition, polymorphism means ability of a method or object to attain different forms as per the situation. That means the behavior of the object will be determined at runtime based on the uh, business logic what we apply, based on the uh, objects what we create of classes. Poly means many, morphism means forms. So polymorphism means many forms. So this definition exactly uh, suitable to the polymorphism word. So polymorphism addresses the simplicity issue as I explained. It is one of the issues of uh, functional programming. Let's, let's know more about polymorphism. We basically have two types of, two types of static poly, uh, polymorphism. Sorry. We basically have two types of polymorphism. They are static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism. Static polymorphism means we create methods of different signatures but with the same name. We call it static polymorphism and also we call it method overloading. Just remember method overloading or static polymorphism means a method with the uh, Two, method, two or more methods with the same name but different signature. Here signature means uh, it can be a different written type or different number of parameters of the methods with same name. Dynamic polymorphism means we will override a method in base class in child class using virtual and override keywords. Now we're going to look into the code how we implemented the static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism. Let's go to code. So here uh, in this application I have two classes one is CLS product and other one is CLS product with discount. Here if you see CLS product with discount class is inherited from CLS product. CLS product here is a base class. So be, uh, we uh, basically inherit a base class into child class to utilize the common functionality that is available in base classes. Okay, that means if you have a number of child classes and all those child classes uh, need to have the common functionality then, then it can be written in a base class like a CLS product or something so that it is available to the child classes when they inherit from the base class. So what is there in CLS product? You, let's have a look at this. Look at the code. So we have a class called CLS product which is a base class and in this uh, I have a method called calculate total cost. Just look at the signature. This calculate total cost contains integer as a return type and it has it is having two parameters their quantity and product 
and the logic we what we have is quantity multiplied by product which basically gives the total cost of the products and we also have another method calculate total cost just observe that the first method name is also calculate total cost and the second method name is also calculate total cost and the return types are also same if you see here and here but what is deferred here the difference here is the number of parameters in the first method calculate total cost we have two parameters quantity and uh, uh, per product cost and in the second uh, calculate total cost method we are having three parameters they are quantity per product and also discount and let's have a look at the body if you see here I am calling the calculate total cost method which is defined here itself and also and from that I am subtracting discount uh, so you can imagine we are basically uh, uh, using we are basically use, uh, using this method to determine uh, total cost with discount but I did not give a different name here the reason I wanted to explain you the static polymorphism that's why I have given the method names same but with different parameters so this is called static polymorphism a method uh, two or more methods with the same name but uh, different uh, number of parameters are, are written types okay and we also have another method calculate total cost again if you observe all these method names are same calculate total cost calculate total cost calculate total cost and here if you see it is marked with a keyword called virtual virtual means so using virtual methods you can define uh, logic uh, in the base class itself and also in the child class it can be overridden with a different logic or different implementation if you see here calculate total cost is having logic says it is basically returning the total cost is and it is calling a method calculate total cost in the same class uh, passing uh, quantity and product that means it basically calls this uh, first method uh, which gives the total cost and it is uh, uh, appending currency as well I mean type of currency it can be INR or dollar or something okay this uh, so whenever a child class in, inherits from this base class this method will be overridden let's go to the child class here CLS product with discount so here if you see CLS product with the discount is inherited from CLS product as I told you the methods that are marked with virtual in base classes base classes will be overridden in child classes using override keyword see I have override overridden this calculate total cost method of CLS product in this cell in this child class CLS product with the discount okay so how I overridden using override now I have given different implementation here what is that the total cost with the discount of 10% is if you see here what I written just the total cost is I have changed this uh, text to just explain you the uh, uh, to just show you the different implementations nothing other than that okay now you seen uh, how a static polymorphism is implemented that is uh, different uh, uh, two method names with uh, different uh, number of parameters here this method is containing three parameters and this method is containing two parameters and the method names are same okay let's run this application and uh, see it in action click on start let's give okay let's uh, let's examine this uh, UI as well I'm having one text box product quantity 
another text box which takes product cost and also I have one discount text box which is optional you can give zero or more and this box total cost text box basically is a multiplication of quantity and cost and I have two met two buttons here one is uh, uh, one will calculate the total cost using static polymorphism methods and the other one will calculate again the same total cost but using dynamic polymorphism let us do uh, let us do some operations here let us say product quantity is 2 and product cost is 3 and discount is 0 let us say 0 and uh, obviously you know total cost will be 6 let's click on total cost by static polymorphism so in this button click what I have done I have created an object of a CLS product if you see okay and then uh, I am reading the data from text boxes so I have taken uh, total product cost into pro uh, per product cost variable and the quantity 2 into quantity variable and the discount value which is 0 into discount if discount equal to 0 what I am doing now so I am calling the method of calculate, uh, calculate total cost which is having two parameters in the class CLS product if you see the class name is CLS product let's click on F11 and step into that method see I have come to the class CLS product and within that the method name is calculate total cost now let us see the values quantity is 2 and the per product is cost is 3 just click on F10 now you see the total cost is 3 guys what you have seen is uh, you, uh, on the click of button uh, button I have taken I have read this uh, quantity and cost and uh, and uh, invoke the method calculate total cost which is in the class CLS product now let us see other uh, uh, let us see other uh, scenario here let us say the discount value is 2 again click on total cost by static polymorphism F10 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 now discount is greater than 0 so it comes to the L spot guys if you see now I am calling the method calculate total cost which is in the CLS product class but with a different para different number of parameters quantity cost and discount but in the first scenario I'm I am calling a method calculate total cost with two parameters here when the discount is greater than zero I'm calling another method calculate total cost but uh, three diff three parameters let's do F11 see now calculate total in the first scenario I have invoked calculate total cost with two parameters in the second scenario where the discount is greater than zero I am calc uh, I am invoking the another method calculate total total cost with uh, three parameters and observe in the previous session we have looked at reusability see uh, in the functional programming we used to again write this uh, logic integer quantity and product here I mean in place of uh, this one minus integer discount since now we are in object oriented programming I did not repeat this logic instead I have called this uh, calculate total cost method just click on F11 see the control now has gone to this method that means I am reusing the existing functionality. Now let's see. See total cost uh, by static polymorphism. Now it has given 3. Uh, it is basically 2 multiplied by 3, 6. But since we given uh, of discount 2, now the value is 4. So in static polymorphism, we have invoked methods calculate total cost of different parameters, different number of parameters. When discount equal to zero, we uh, we have 
uh, invoked the method with two parameters that is calculate total cost with two parameters when the discount is greater than zero we have invoked the method calculate total cost with uh, different three parameters which uh, and both are in the CLS product class okay this is static polymorphism means you will have a different uh, uh, different name uh, you, you will have more than two methods or uh, more than one method with the same name but different signatures the signature here mean it can be different uh, uh, access modifiers or a different number of parameters in our case we have calculate total cost with the same return type but uh, different number of parameters here we have three parameters here we have two parameters now let's look at dynamic polymorphism so guys uh, let's uh, 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 give some different values quantity equal to 5 and uh, cost equal to 10 and make discount equal to 0 as we seen uh, uh, in the PowerPoint dynamic polymorphism is nothing but overriding the methods guys here the signatures will be same but uh, we will call uh, methods of parent class and child classes uh, based on the runtime situation okay you remember in dynamic polymorphism method signatures are same that means same method name same return type and same number of parameters now let's go here uh, just open this just open this and click on total cost by dynamic uh, polymorphism so in uh, in the button click event uh, I have basically created a variable of type CLS product which is a base class now this base class is uh, so base class is basically contains uh, now uh, I have I am reading uh, the text box values cost and quantity and discount is zero now here if you see I am creating an object of CLS product here okay initially I have create I have created a variable for CLS product class here I am creating an object for the CLS product class guys see now I have created an object of a CLS product that's why it is product dot CLS product product is your namespace name and I am calling the method calculate total cost so since I have created an object of CLS product uh, now and uh, invoking the method calculate total cost now the control should go to the method calculate total cost which is in the CLS product because the object is of type CLS product let's click on F11 see now the control has come to the parent class because I have created an object for CL, uh, CLS product which is parent class and the method name is calculate total cost here what I am doing I am taking the quantity and the product here I will uh, calculate the uh, total cost using the method which is in the same class see everywhere we have the reusability now you see the total cost is 50 INR here because multiplication of uh, 5 and 10 is 50 now now let's do this one now let's give discount as 4 or some anything that is greater than 0 now click on total cost by dynamic again if you see we have created a variable of type CLS product which is base class now the discount is greater than 0 it will come to the else part guys just observe here in the previous example uh, when discount is a zero I have created an object of a CLS product which is base class now here 
the variable is of type base class which is CLS product but I'm creating an object of child class which is CLS product with discount now if you see the variable CLS product variable is having a reference to the object of the child class which is CLS product with discount let's look at this one now this uh, CLS product base class is having a reference to the object of CLS product with discount okay that means uh, when you uh, that means now the control will go to the calculate total cost method which is in the CLS product with discount child class just click on F11 guys you see now we have come to the CLS the control has come to the CLS product with discount because the object type is of CLS product with discount guys you see now the control is in the method calculate total cost which is having three parameters but you see the overwrite method earlier the control has gone to the method calculate total cost which is having virtual keyword now the control has come to the method calculate total cost which is basically overridden using the override keyword just do F7 see the total cost with the discount of 10% is 40 INR guys now by now you must have learned what is dynamic polymorphism so we basically having a base class which is a CLS product and a child class which is CLS product with the discount okay we inherited base class into child class and base class is having some virtual method and as well as uh, non virtual methods so these are the non virtual methods we have used non virtual methods for uh, static polymorphism example you know static polymorphism means same method names with a different signature and we have used this virtual key uh, virtual method calculate total cost to explain dynamic polymorphism so how we have done in dynamic polymorphism uh, so the variable type is of the base class but uh, at runtime we have created objects of different classes when the discount is zero we have created an object of uh, uh, base class CLS product when the discount is greater than zero we have created an object of child class and pointed this uh, object to the base class CLS product so even though the base class is uh, uh, variable is uh, CLS product and since the uh, even though the variable is uh, CLS product type but the control went to the CLS product with discount because the object is CLS product with discount hence hence the dynamic polymorphism is implemented uh, uh, how just remember we have created objects of uh, different classes at runtime based on a condition but the base type is the base class guys that is about uh, uh, dynamic polymorphism and static polymorphism just to repeat dynamic static polymorphism can be implemented by using uh, method overloading and dynamic polymorphism can be implemented by using virtual and override keywords virtual will be used in the base class method and uh, override will be used in the child class methods so this is about polymorphism and uh, let's have we already seen inheritance here implicitly see inheritance means so we basically inherited CLS product class into CLS product with the discount base class so why we need a parent class and uh, you can have a parent class when there are multiple child classes which need the common functionality where that means where the functionality is common to 
multiple child classes let us say you have uh, uh, you have uh, you have one base class and uh, one child class here i will show you uh, in action you already seen here in uh, uh, inheritance in polymorphism but i would like to show you using uh, simple types let us say i have a base class that is a method in base class uh, uh, i have a base class uh, parent class the name is base class and i have and i have one method here that is method in base class and i have written some uh, some uh, some sentence here i am from base class okay and i have created another uh, class that is child class and here I have uh, I have one method that is method in child class. Let us look at at run. I mean by running this application. Just make it. Uh, for, um, what is this? Uh, for, um, form. Let me take this. what's the name of this class oh just form one let's go to program.cs form one that's cool and uh, if you come here uh, let me close everything so we have this base class which contains one method and we have this child class which contains one method now go to form one what I'm going to do here just a simple thing I'm going I have created a, 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 an object for this child class let us see what we have in uh, what methods we have in this method so if you see when I created an object of child class I'm having access only to one method that is method in child class so that is what we defined in this child class method in child class okay but uh, let's do but uh, and you see i do not in child class uh, uh, i created an object of this child class and this child class doesn't have access doesn't have access to the method in the base class i have access to the method in the child class only now let's go and let's go and inherit inherit base class into the child class so inheritance you can do by using colon and the class name now i did not make changes here now let's come back to this form one now let's see guys now see when i inherited the base class into the child class I'm my child class object is having access to the method in the base class as well method in base class in this way all the child classes can have access to the common functionality or common methods that are defined in the base class this is a kind of reusability and and extensibility as well extensibility we have seen in polymorphism uh, areas where you have the CLS product uh, class which is a base class where you have calculate total cost and calculate total cost the same methods but with the different method name with the different parameters that means we are able to extend this uh, calculate total cost method the same method name with the uh, different uh, uh, parameters to achieve total cost with the discount guys that is about inheritance and uh, polymorphism thank you very much uh, for your time attending this session so uh, in uh, in this session we have looked at polymorphism and inher inheritance and in the previous sessions we have seen abstraction and encapsulation and before that we have seen functional programming issues and uh, how the functional programming issues are addressed using object-oriented programming 
just to recap we have four functional programming issues they are reusability extensibility simplicity and maintainability and uh, reusability issue is addressed by classes and objects and extensibility issue is addressed by inheritance aggregation and composition we have not uh, looked into aggregation and composition we will see them later and the simplicity issue is addressed by using abs abstraction encapsulation and polymorphism and maintainability is nothing but uh, uh, easier maintenance that means when you make change in one class that reflects in all the other pages or classes so maintainability is achieved when you achieve uh, when you achieve I mean when you address reusability extensibility and simplicity uh, guys please go back and uh, look at all three parts in object oriented programming uh, session so that uh, you will have better clarity and go part by part uh, one by one that means in sequence part one part two and part three which is this session in the next session we are going to learn building loosely coupled systems or components and uh, we will go in detail uh, of implementing interfaces in building loosely coupled systems or components thank you very much for your time and looking forward to see you guys in the next session have a good day